Magnetic susceptibility. Now in Turkish this is known as magnetic alınganlık or duygunluk. So this basically is a concept basically that tells us about the responsiveness of a material to a magnetic field. The magnetic field had an unfortunate name in the past. It was also called magnetizing force. And uh, the reason behind this is the magnetic field magnetizes objects. So what is the degree to which it magnetizes an object? That is quantified by this parameter called magnetic susceptibility. The degree to which a material is responsive to the magnetic field H. This is described by susceptibility. And we show susceptibility with the simple chi. So chi is defined as the magnetization that is caused by the magnetic field divided by the magnetic field. And uh, you can see that in uh, CGS units we will have uh, magnetization is in EMU per centimeter cube, H is in Ørsted, so the unit of susceptibility will be EMU per Ørsted centimeter cube. In SI, on the other hand, the unit of magnetization is ampere per meter and that of H is ampere per meter, so in SI, chi is dimensionless or unitless okay so uh, since we have magnetization defined as a magnetic moment per volume uh, this chi is also known as volume susceptibility so since is uh, since magnetization is magnetic moment per volume, um, chi is also known as or is also called volume susceptibility. It's also possible to define other susceptibilities. For example, if you take the volume susceptibility and divide it by rho, the density of the material, then you will have magnetization per volume divided by mass per volume or volume per mass. You will get uh, the magnetization per mass. So uh, this is also in units, in CGS units, this will be um, EMU per Ørsted gram. So magnetization per mass per magnetic field. That's our magnetic susceptibility. So um, magnetization is magnetic moment per volume 
and we have uh, density mass per volume uh, divided by magnetic field gives us uh, what we call mass susceptibility which is measured in CGS EMU per Ørsted gram. Rho is density, which is mass divided by volume. So if you do it this way, we call it mass susceptibility. Now, if you plot magnetization is a function of magnetic field so this suggests that there is going to be a linear relationship the resulting curve magnetization versus magnetic field curve they are known as magnetization curves And each type of uh, magnetic material has a signature uh, for this uh, response. So if you look at a diamagnetic material, the susceptibility chi is negative. It's of the order uh, 10 to minus 6 to a 10 to minus 4 it's small and it is also not temperature dependent so you can see here it's flat with temperature so uh, diamagnetic materials will have negative susceptibility small and not temperature dependent for paramagnetism on the other hand the susceptibility is positive it's also small of the order 10 to 4 to 10 to 6 uh, but it does have a temperature dependence chi uh, varies as 1 over t here here it is not a function of temperature on the other hand if we look at an antiferromagnet for antiferromagnets we see that the susceptibility first increases with temperature and then it decreases as 1 over T. So this part is basically paramagnetic. So we have a critical temperature called the nail temperature. Where the antiferromagnet goes through a phase transition. It becomes a paramagnet afterwards. And before it's a paramagnet, it has a, an increasing susceptibility. Um, well, it, it, it sh basically shows different responses for the different alignments with magnetic field. But uh, basically, it is uh, increasing with uh, temperature. And then, uh, finally, we find that uh, it's going to decrease as 1 over T. Now, uh, if you look at a fer ferromagnet or fairy magnet, we find a completely different behavior. So in ferromagnets and fairy magnets, we observe uh, two important uh, phenomena. One is the fact that we have saturation. After a certain magnetic field, the magnetization does not change anymore. And when you go back to a zero magnetic field, it doesn't follow the same path. It, the magnetization lags behind the magnetic field. Even though the magnetic field is, de is decreased back to zero, magnetization does not go back to zero uh, at zero field. It lags behind. So this behavior uh, that we see here, M lags behind H when H is decreased back to zero is known as hysteresis. Hysteresis is a Greek word which means lag behind. So uh, 
let me summarize in ferro and ferry magnets in the magnetization curve we have two important phenomena one we see saturation so we see that when the magnetic field is large enough at large enough values of the magnetic field H the magnetization M becomes constant at a value of saturation magnetization M sub s and the second phenomenon is hysteresis we find that uh, after saturation a decrease in H in the magnetic field to zero does not reduce the magnetization to zero yet so we need more field more negative field to reduce it back to zero and this behavior is called hysteresis hysteresis is a Greek word for lag behind okay so because of this behavior with zero magnetic field we still have a magnetization uh, we will we can basically uh, make permanent magnets out of these ferromagnet or uh, ferry magnetic materials so this allows us to make permanent magnets ferro and ferry magnetic materials can thus be made into permanent magnets okay so we have introduced the concept of magnetic susceptibility which is basically describing to us how the material responds to an applied magnetic field the, uh, the ratio magnetization that is resulting from the applied magnetic field divided by the field that we apply is called susceptibility in CGS it's EMU per centimeter cube per Ørsted so it's EMU per Ørsted centimeter cube in SI it's dimensions because M and H have the same unit ampere per meter uh, it's also known as volume susceptibility because magnetization is moment per volume if it is moment per mass that we uh, define uh, as magnetization moment per mass uh, this is going to give us a new susceptibility so volume susceptibility divided by density that is magnetization uh, per magnetic field m over h divided by density mass per volume gives us moment per mass times 1 over h which is emu per Ørsted grams in cgs and this is 
basically mass susceptibility. So if we were to do it in SI, in SI if I take the susceptibility and divide it by uh, density, the unit would be uh, 1 over the density because uh, the susceptibility does not have a unit in SI. It would be a meter cube per kilogram, so 1 over density unit. Uh, the M versus H curves uh, that we obtain are called magnetization curves that describes the response of the material to the magnetic field and they have a signature uh, behavior for different types of uh, magnetism. For diamagnetism uh, the susceptibility is negative and small and temperature independent. For paramagnetism it's positive, small and it varies as 1 over T. For antiferromagnets, up to a nail temperature, the susceptibility increases uh, with temperature. And after uh, the nail temperature, it goes as 1 over T, which is uh, basically the behavior of paramagnets. So here you can see uh, in this plot, the red one is susceptibility. So this is the behavior of susceptibility and the blue one is the behavior of 1 over susceptibility so you can see here so the susceptibility increases with temperature and decreases as 1 over T after the phase transition temperature nail temperature is the temperature where there is a phase transition from antiferromagnet to a paramagnet. For ferromagnetic and ferrimagnetic materials, we see that when we increase the magnetic field, the magnetization uh, saturates at a large field value, and when we decrease it back to zero, the magnetization lags behind H. It doesn't. It does decrease, but it doesn't go back to zero. The saturation value of magnetization is called saturation magnetization and the hysteresis is a Greek word for lag behind. So these two behaviors, saturation and hysteresis, basically prove to us that it's a ferro or ferrimagnetic material that we're dealing with. Because of the non-zero magnetization at zero field, we can build permanent magnets out of these materials.